So I'm Keshav, and I did this little side project where I generated Tabla tracks, and I play them on the web using processing. It's very simple, and let's take you through how I did it. So just to start, who am I and why you should listen. I was a physicist, then I was a lecturer, then I was a data scientist. You guys can look at it later. But so yeah, what is it? What did I make? I took a JSON file. I took tabla notation of sequences. I put them in a JSON file. So this has specification for the sound sample and other things like which pad the note is played on. That's, that's one aspect of it. I added with Markov chains where every note is a state. And I jump from state to state, which is one note to another note. I add it to processing, and that's really what it is. And this is what it looks like, which we'll get to a demo. And if you don't like it, you can refresh and change the color scheme. So going with the ethos of processing and making everything random. So this is, in the end, what it looks like. And let's just go straight to. So here you can enter any value, and it will generate a random pattern with that many notes in it. I hope it's. And this is for fun. If you drag it up, it slows down the BPM. And if you drag it down, and obviously I drag it all the way down, just make it fast. And it sounds, I mean, I enjoy it, and it's just for fun. And that's pretty much it. And if I go back, you can't see it because of the contrast. So we'll refresh and try to change the color scheme. OK. So if you, uh, you can't see it because it's very high contrast, but the notes that it's playing are displaying here. And just for gimmicky, if it's a note on the left pad, it's on the left side. And if it's a note played on the right pad, which tabla has two pads, they go on each side. And if it's a compound note, it's on both sides. So it's just for fun. And the tabla is just flashing. So that's, that's the entirety of it. If you want to see what it's made of, you can play individual notes, like a, like a K note and a Na note. And then you can play a compound note, K and Na, which is Ga. You can play patterns that I've put in on there, like da din din na. You can play some songs. I only put like five songs. And obviously, you can go back and look at the notation. So that's, that's all of it. And yeah, and we can end the talk here. Right? Uh, so now I'll go through what I did to make it work. So it's just an introduction to processing and basically what I did. So these are. An example of notes, you have there are three notes that I'm using on the left pad. This only has two. And there's a bunch on the right. And if you combine certain one of them, which are standard notes, you get those compound notes. So this is what uh, my JSON file looks like. Uh, everything, I'm sharing everything. And I'll do this just very quickly right now. If this is not on Git. This is on a website called Glitch, which hosts, is, hosts JavaScript web apps. So you can just click right here. You can go to Remix, and you can get your own version of it. You can play around with the code. It's, it's a very minimal IDE. So if you wanted, you can change the JSON file. You can change the sound files. You could create your own little generative thing. And all you need to figure out is how to switch to the JSON file. So we have notes. So I have notes specified if it's a left pad, if it's a right pad, if it's a compound note, where the samples are stored online. And this is my notation for songs. We have patterns, which is the next level up from notes. Uh, I got these from my teacher two years ago. I was taking a tabla class for a long time with my teacher. And I was saying to him, what if we could randomly create these things? And obviously, you know, he's a tabla teacher. He's like, no, this is stupid. Why would you want to do this? The humans should. I mean, this has, doesn't have the expressivity of a human playing, because when you strike, how hard you strike, those are things that are harder to do. But for a simple amateur, I think it's fun to listen to. But so this is the notation. And what I've done is basically transcribe it into the JSON file. 
I haven't done all of it. I've only done some. Uh, well, this goes on. I have also incorporated a form of time signature, because if you've actually seen someone perform tabla music, sometimes they speed it up. They do twice the beat rate. So looking a standard, if you go back, on a standard note, there's like four notes on a line. So that's what I'm going with. That's four by four or eight by eight. I guess I used eight for two lines. And so this is my way of incorporating different time signatures in there. And similarly, I take the key for these patterns, and I'm able to create notes out of these patterns, because these are like the motifs that you learn, these four note, five note, eight note patterns, and you can turn those into songs. So the first iteration, I recorded the notes myself, and I had a really crappy Tabla set, so the sound is nice. But then I uh, found some free samples. And there was a nice guy who's created an another Tabla app, which I'll show. And he shared a sound font file, but that's a different, you use midi.js to use that. I'm not using that, I'm using pure MP3. So if anybody has Tabla samples or wants to record them, you know, you can talk to me after. And so that's just the first half. Like, how did I get the samples, the sound files? And I have this list of patterns and how I turn it into a Markov chain. So people who do not know what a Markov chain is, it's for you. Uh, it's just a sequence of events where what is the next event is only matters on the event that happened last. So maybe something like, what will I eat today? I ask myself, did I eat this thing yesterday? Did I eat this thing last time? And I won't eat that. I mean, that's something that's Markovian, where it only depends on this. So I'm. I'm thinking of, of one note only depends on the last note. It's a very simple assumption that makes it easy to simulate this. And the only side effect is it's obviously short term. And you can use other technologies to make it more long term. These are my Markov states, left pad, right pad, both. This is if you wanted to individually play them. Uh, so. <laughs> Calculating the transition probabilities was probably the only part where I used Python. You know, hashtag PyData. It's very easy. It just crawls the JSON file, which, yeah, it just crawls this file and calculates if, if there's a K, what's the chance of the next one being a Na? And I've also added the stop note, which is where nothing is played for that beat, which is here. Since I haven't transcribed all the patterns I have in my notebook, which is something I will do, I have injected some more randomness so every other note is more probable and also increase the probability for a stop note so it sounds a little nicer and once this is done right once you have this probability distribution for every note how what is the probability that any other note will be played after a gay has been played once you have that all that's left to do is simulate the markov chain so which is just drawing from the distribution so you randomly pick a note and then you just let the chain go on and I use p5.js to do that. And it's very, the three major things that hook to that are p5.load sound, which is just to load the sample file, the mp3, into the workspace. p5.load json just loads the json into a data array, and then you can parse it. And draw, which is the key feature of p5, because it's essentially a drawing library. It draws on a canvas, which is your entire web page. And draw is actually called every frame, and a frame is defined by a frame rate, right? So that's for controlling the BPM of the track. Before you start ever doing P5 code, there's just three things you need to learn, which is the preload, the setup, and the draw. That's it. If you, if you write enough code inside these three, you can use P5. It's initially P5 of processing, it was meant for non-coders who are creative, so it's very simple to use. Preload is like one big promise. If people don't know what a promise is, which they might not, it's basically to load all the files that you would need in one spot, and nothing else will execute until this, everything here has been executed. Because JavaScript runs asynchronously, and your code might break. If the samples are not loaded. So preload is just for loading 
heavy data, like the JSON file, the sound before setup is just for defining all the variables you will use to actually draw. And the last step is draw, which is, as I said, code that's executed every frame. And you, here we just draw from our probability distribution. Other things I used are basic listeners for mouse interactions, which were all the buttons. I also had to use touch interactions. Touch interactions are different in P5 uh, than mouse ones, so you can use it on a mobile device or an iPad. And the last thing is p5.sound library, which allows you to construct phrases and parts. Parts are, phrases are a subset of parts, but it's really not important. And then, right, all you really need to do that is I have a function called playlist. I send it an array, which is my array of notes, right? The notes are connected to sound files, so whenever it hits a certain note, it will play that sound file, and that's really how it works. You create an instance of a phrase, you give it callback function to play the actual note, and you give it an array that it will play. That's it. The timing is handled based on the position of the note in this array. So if there's a stop note, it'll be a stop. And secondly is the BPM. So all you need is a BPM, an array of notes, the notes connected to sound files, and that's all you need to play any kind of simple music. The next function is the callback, which is the actual play note. The key part here is I have all the notes in a dictionary, and I just call dot .play because this is a sound file in this dictionary. And time is just a variable that's part of this callback, so it intrinsically calculates the time based on the position on the array. You don't have to worry about that. And there's other logic here that I have omitted for how to play a left note or a right note or play the notes together or overlap the notes just for fun so it sounds more real. So that's pretty much the entirety of how the application works.